Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. Welcome to our video. We are from group 1 and will be presenting the assignment under the course FTQM1223 Aljabar Linear. I'm Engkau Muhammad Afi and I'll be the first presenter. Without further ado, let's start the presentation. For this assignment, there are seven questions that cover the topics from chapter 4 until chapter 6. The topics include eigenvalues and eigenvectors, diagonalization, orthogonally diagonalization, resume process, transformation matrix, and kernel and range. And for every question, we have to answer based on our chosen matrix. The chosen matrix has to be 3 times 3, non-diagonal and symmetric. And our chosen matrix A is as shown on the right. 3 times 3 metric with all the entries are 1. Now, let's start with question 1. Obtain the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of A. First, we have to know that eigenvalues and eigenvectors come from the equation A S equal to lambda S, such that A is a matrix, lambda is a scalar, and S is a non-zero vector. From this equation, we have to find lambda, which is the eigenvalue, and S, which is the eigenvector. From the equation, we multiply the identity matrix I with S, and as we know, it won't change anything, and the equation is still valid. Next, we bring lambda I S to the left, and then we factorize S. We are now left with the equation, open bracket, A minus lambda I, close bracket, S equal to 0. Then we can find for the matrix, A minus lambda I. It's just an easy step, and we have this matrix as shown on the bottom left of the screen. Next, we find for the determinant of the matrix A minus lambda i, or what we call as characteristic polynomial. Since it's a 3 times 3 matrix, we have to settle with the cofactor expansion first. The steps shown on the screen are cofactor expansion along the first row. After doing all the steps, we get our characteristic polynomial, which is negative lambda cubed plus 3 lambda square. We let this expression equal to 0 and now we have our characteristic equation. We solve it for lambda and we get lambda 1 equal to 0, lambda 2 equal to 0 and lambda 3 equal to 3. And these are our eigenvalues. Since we have obtained our eigenvalues, now our job is to find the eigenvectors. First thing, we have to know that eigenvectors have to satisfy the equation AS equal to lambda X such that X is not a zero vector. Or we can simply obtain the eigenvector by solving the homogeneous equation open bracket a minus lambda i close bracket x equal to zero and we have to do this for all the obtained eigenvalues since we have found the matrix a minus lambda i hence it should be easier to use this equation instead for lambda one and lambda two equal to zero you can see the working at the left of the screen from the equation we substitute lambda with zero and we are left with a system of linear equation to be solved as suppose we perform elementary row operations on this augmented matrix to get the reduced row epsilon form RREF. Since there is only one linear one and that is for S1, hence S2 and S3 are free variables. We let them S and T respectively such that S and T are real numbers. Thus, we get S1 is equal to negative S minus T. Now we have obtained S1, S2 and S3. So we can conclude for our eigenvector. Since we have two free variables, we obtain two linearly independent eigenvectors. The eigenspaces corresponding to eigenvalue 0 are S, negative 1, 1, 0, and T, negative 1, 0, 1. Uh, and such that S and T are real numbers. For lambda 3 equal to 3, similar step as before, we substitute lambda with 3 and we solve for the SLE. We perform elementary row operation on the omega metric to get the RREF since X3 does not have leading one, thus X3 is the free variable. We let X3 equal to R such that R is a real number. Then we can solve it for S1 and S2 which is coincidentally also equal to R. Now we can obtain our eigenvector corresponding to eigenvalue 3. The eigenspace is R111 such that R is a real number. Hence, for this question, for our matrix A, we obtain two eigenvalues which are 0 and 3 and three linearly independent eigenvectors as mentioned earlier. Hi, moving on to question 2. Use P that diagonalizes A to calculate A to the power of 17. So, before we diagonalize A, we must first we must make sure that A is diagonalizable. So, how do we uh, determine if is the matrix A diagonalizable or not? So, from theorem 4.4, if we have a matrix that is a square matrix with n rows and n columns, then the followings are equivalent. First, 
A is diagonalizable and B. A has the number of n linearly independent eigenvectors. So in our question here, since A is a tree by tree matrix and A has three linearly independent eigenvectors, so we can say that A is diagonalizable. So at the eigenvectors is what we obtained earlier in question one. Okay, so A is diagonalizable, so we can proceed. All right, so since A is diagonalizable, that exists invertible matrix P that is an invertible matrix P such that uh, this formula inverse P, A, P is a diagonal matrix D. So the matrix P is uh, the combination of eigenvectors P1, P2 and P3. We put it together in a matrix. So uh, this is our matrix P and then uh, the diagonal matrix D is a matrix where the main diagonal are the values of eigenvalues and other entries are zero. So in here, the first eigenvector equals to zero, lambda two, second eigenvector equals to zero, and lambda three equals to three. So this is what we got as our diagonal matrix D. So from this formula, we can derive it into finding the A to the power of 17. So first, we multiply both sides with matrix P and inverse p so we can cancel p p minus one here p inverse p here so here on the left side uh, we will have the matrix a equals to p d inverse p so we power both side with uh, the power of 17 and lastly we got a to the power of 17 equals to p uh, multiply with d to the power of 17, multiply with inverse p. Alright, so this is the simplified formula. So we already have our p here. So let's find uh, d to the power of 17. So simply, uh, this is our matrix. This is actually a very easy matrix since all the entries are 0 except for 1, which is 3. So the power of 17 only apply to the non-zero entries lah. Non-zero entries. So he did this is the value of this is the matrix of d to the power of 17. So then next we find the inverse of p using row reduction. We put matrix p on the left side and then we put the identity matrix on the right side and from there we can use elementary row operations to reduce it to an RREF or the left side will be the identity matrix. So we can, uh, it's not an RR, yeah, I'm sorry. So the left side from the from P, we reduce it to identity matrix. So on the right side, we will get the inverse of P. Huh, this is the inverse of P. So finally, we put it together, A to the power of 17 equals to this. So this is our final answer. We first multiply p to the p with d to the power of 17. And after we got this matrix, we multiply it with the inverse of p. And this is the value of a to the power of 17. That's all for question 2. Easy, right? So that's it. Hi, it's me again. Let's continue with question 3. Find P prime that orthogonally diagonalizes A using the Grassmi process on the columns of P, which is obtained from question two in R three given the Euclidean inner product. First thing, before finding P prime, how can we know is our matrix A orthogonally diagonalizable or not? From theorem four point seven, if A is a square matrix and it is orthogonally diagonalizable, then A is symmetric. And in fact, the converse of this theorem is also true. And since our matrix A, as shown on the screen, is trivially symmetric, hence our matrix A is indeed orthogonally diagonalizable. From question 2, we have obtained our matrix P and we have checked that our matrix A is orthogonally diagonalizable. But does the previous matrix P orthogonally diagonalize matrix A? Well, first thing to say that matrix P orthogonally diagonalizes A, matrix P has to be an orthogonal matrix. What is an orthogonal matrix? An orthogonal matrix is a square matrix such that its transpose is the same as its inverse. We can check for our previous matrix P. We can find the inverse and the transpose, and they are clearly not the same. Since the transpose of P is not the same as the inverse of P, we can conclude that our matrix P does not 
orthogonally diagonal angles A. However, we can still obtain a matrix P that we can later we later call it P prime that orthogonally diagonalizes A by using the Grand Smith process. From our previous matrix P is split into three columns vector, which as shown on the left of the screen, we then let those column vectors as the elements of R3. And as the question asks, we will be using the Euclidean inner product. Well, it's just a standard dot product such that U dot V is equal to U1 V1 plus U2 V2 plus U3 V3. Now look at, let's look at step one. Such an easy step, let V1 equal to U1, which is negative 1, 1, 0. Let's move to step two. Let V2 is equal to U2 minus the inner product of U2 and V1 divided by norm of V1 square multiplied by, multiplied by V1. Or you can see it on the screen. It will be clearer if we calculate everything one by one. You can see the details on the right of the screen. After finding what is needed, we put everything into the formula and we obtain V2 is equal to negative 1 over 2, negative 1 over 2, 1. Now let's move forward to longer step, step 3. Let V3 equal to U3 minus the inner product of U3 and V1 divided by norm of V1 square multiplied by V1 minus the inner product of U3 and V1 divided by norm of V2 square multiplied by V2. Or you can just see it on the screen. As shown on the left, we find the details one by one and we put everything into the formula and we obtain V3 is equal to 1, 1, 1. Now we have our new vectors V1, V2 and V3. They are what we call as the orthogonal basis. But, but no, we are not done yet. We have to normalize the vectors first by dividing each vector with their corresponding norms. So we find the norms as usual and divide every vector by its norm. Then we obtain what we call the orthogonal basis. We obtain the set that contains Q1 equal to negative 1 over set 2, 1 over set 2, 0. Q2 equal to negative 1 over set 6, negative 1 over set 6, set 2 over 3. And Q3 equal to 1 over set 3, 1 over set 3, 1 over set 3. From the autonomous basis, we form three column vectors and form the new matrix P prime, such that matrix P prime orthogonally diagonalizes our matrix A. If, if we are still not sure, we can check for it. To check, we should know that the matrix P prime is said to orthogonally diagonalize A if matrix P prime is an orthogonal matrix such that P prime inverse multiplied by A multiplied by P prime is equal to P prime transpose multiplied by A multiplied by P prime and it is a diagonal matrix. And indeed, after we do one by one, the inverse and the transpose of P prime are the same and they obey the P prime inverse or P prime transpose multiplied by A multiplied by P prime is equal to a diagonal matrix. Hence, our matrix P prime is verified and indeed true. Hi, moving on to question four. Find P prime that orthogonally diagonalizes A using the Graham Smith process on the column of P from question two. In R3, given the weighted equilibrium in the product, uh, as stated here. So from question two, we obtain that P is equal to negative one, 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 zero, one, zero, one, one. Well, P1, P2, P3 is the column vector for the matrix P respective, respectively. From the column vectors, we can form the basis for matrix P in three new vectors, which are U1 equals to negative 1, 1, 0, U2 equals to negative 1, 0, 1, and U3 equals to 1, 1, 1, uh, where all the vectors are in R3. So, in order to find the P prime that orthogonally diagonalize A, we need to make sure that U1, U2, and U3 are orthogonal basis, which means that the inner product of the vectors must equal to zero. By using the weighted Euclidean inner product, the inner product of the vectors is not equal <coughs> is not equals to zero. As we can see on the right, on the right side of the slide, uh, the inner product of U1, U2. Uh, is equals to 3, while the inner product of U1 and U3 is equals to negative 1, and U2, uh, the inner product of U2 and U3 is equals to negative 2. So, all of them are not equal to 0. Thus, we will need to use the Grand Smith process in order to obtain the orthogonal and autonomous basis. Moving on to the first step of Grand Smith process, First, we choose V1 equals to U1, 
which is equals to negative 1, 1, 0. Next, we continue to the next step by choosing V2 equals to U2 minus the inner product of U2 and V1 over the norm of V1 to the power of 2 times V1. Firstly, we will need to calculate the inner product of U2 and V1 and we will get 3 times negative 1 times negative 1 plus 2 times 0 times 1 plus 1 times 0 which is equals to 3. And then we will need to calculate the norm of V1 to the power of 2 which is just the uh, inner product of V1 with itself. And we will get 3 times negative 1 to the power of 2 plus 2 times 1 to the power of 2 plus 1 times 1 and we will get 5. After getting all the values, we can plug in, <coughs> plug in them into the formula and we will get V2 equals to the vector negative 1, 0, 1 minus 3 over 5 times the vector or <coughs> the vector negative 1, 1, 0 and we will get V2 equals to negative 2 over 5 negative 3 over 5, 1. So we can say that V1 and V2 are orthogonal. We can check this by calculating the inner product of V1 and V2, or V2, the inner product of V2 and V1, since it's the same according to the lemma. So uh, by calculating the inner product V1 and V2, we will get 3 times negative 1, times negative 2 over 5 plus 2 times 1 times negative 3 over 5 plus 0 times 1. And we will get that the inner product is equals to 0. Which means that V1 and V2 is verified to be orthogonal. Moving on to the third step, we can calculate V3 by using the this formula on the top left. Firstly, we will need to calculate the inner product of U3 and V1 and we will get 3 times 1 times negative 1 plus 2 times 1 times 1 plus 1 times 0 and we simplify this and we will get negative 1. <coughs> Next, we will calculate the inner product of U3 and V2 and we will get it equals to 3 times 1 times negative 2 over 5 plus 2 times 1 times negative 3 over 5 plus 1 times 1 and we will get negative 7 over 5. And lastly, we will need to find the norm of V2 to the power of 2 which is uh, the inner product of V2 with itself and we will get 3 times negative 2 over 5 to the power of 2 plus 2 times negative 3 over 5 to the power of 2 plus 1 times 1 and we will get the norm of V2 to the power of 2 is equals to 11 over 5. And then we will plug in all the values that we get uh, into the formula and we will get V3 is equals to the vector 111 1, 1 plus 1 over 5 times the vector negative 110 1, plus 7 over 5 times 5 over 11 times the vector negative 2 over 5 negative 3 over 5, 1. We, simpli we simplify all of this and we will get the, the vector V3 is equal to 6 over 11, 9 over 11 and, and 18 over 11. Thus, V1, V2 and V3 are all now orthogonal. We can check this by calculating the inner product of the vectors. Remember that uh, the inner product we are using is defined as the weighted one, not the standard one such as question 2. So here I did the checking on uh, checking on whether the vectors are orthogonal or not uh, on the bottom right here. Uh, the inner product of V1 and V3 is equals to inner product of V3 and V1 and we calculate it using the weighted in a product and we will get it equals to zero and same for the inner product of v2 and v3 which is equals to the inner product of v3 and v2 and we will get equals to zero so we can confirm that the vectors that we obtain from the gunsmith 
courses are now are now orthogonal basis. Here uh, we write the orthogonal basis in the form of set where v1 is equals to negative 1, 1, 0. V2 equals to negative 2 over 5, negative 3 over 5, 1. And V3 is equals to 6 over 11, 9 over 11, 18 over 11. And we are not finished yet since we are not sure whether it is autonomous set or not. So we, mem we need to remember that autogon autonomous set is an autogonal set. Where, where each vector has norm 1. So we will need to calculate the norm of each vector to verify this. To calculate the norm of each vector, we will just simply need to calculate the vector with itself. Uh, just add uh, to the power of half or square root them. So, uh, here on the left side, uh, we, we calculate the norm of V1 and we will get square root 5 and the norm of V2 is equals to square root 11 over 5 and the norm of V3 is equals to square root 54 over 11. Just need to be careful that we are using the weighted Euclidean in a product. Uh, as we can see here, all of the vectors has norm that is not equals to 1. So, we can <coughs> obtain the autonomous set by just simply dividing all of the vectors with their norm. On the right side here, uh, I use vector Q to represent the new vectors. Uh, Q1 is equals to 1 over the norm of V1 times V1 and we will get negative 1 over square root 5, 1 over square root 5, 0. And Q2 is equals to 1 over the norm of V2 which is equals to negative, <coughs> negative 2 over square root 55, negative 3 over square root 55, square root 5 over 11. And Q3 equals to 1 over the norm of V3 times V3. And we will get square root 2 over 33, square root 3 over 22, and square root 6 over 11. So now we can write the autonomous set where Q1 equals to negative 1 over square root 5, 1 over square root 5, 0. Q2 equals to negative 2 over square root 55, negative 3 over square root 55, square root 5 over 11. And Q3 equals to square root 2 over 33, square root 3 over 22, and square root 6 over 11. From the autonomous basis we form, we can form three color vectors like this, P1 prime, P2 prime, and P3 prime. And then we can form the new matrix P prime such that matrix P prime orthogonally diagonalizes our matrix A. So our final answer for question 4 will be uh, the matrix P prime equals to negative 1 over square root 5. 1 over square root 5, 0, negative 2 over square root 55, negative 3 over square root 55, square root 5 over 11, square root 2 over 33, square root 3 over 22, square root 6 over 11. Here, I did not uh, provide the proof for P, P prime times post equals to P prime inverse because we are using weighted, in, e, weighted Euclidean for inner product. So the working would be different than the standard in the <coughs> standard in the product from the previous question. That's all for question four. Thank you. <coughs> for the next question, assume that the matrix A is the standard matrix for T A, such as T A is R three is mapped onto R three, as we can see in example five point two three. Obtain T A kernel of T A and range of T A. So, given our matrix A, A is 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. 
as we assume that our matrix A is the standard matrix for TA, we just let our matrix A is equal to the matrix TA. Next, we write the transformation in a matrix form. Here, we can put our matrix TA and we multiply it with vector X. Our vector X is X1, X2, X3. Thus, we will get X1 plus X2 plus X3 for each row, as we can see here. From example 5.23, we can see that <coughs> T is R3 is mapped onto R3 where T X1, X2, X3 equals W1, W2, W3. That's for TA. <coughs> so, as we have already obtained our TA in matrix form, we let our matrix TA is equal to the vector W, which is W1, W2, W3. Here, we turn the matrix form into linear equa equation form. We can see that our equation x1 plus x2 plus x3 is equal to w1, x1 plus x2 plus x3 is equal to w2, and x1 plus x2 plus x3 is equal to w3. So, ta x1, x2, x3 is equal to w1, w2, w3, or x1 plus x2 plus x3, x1 plus x2, plus x3, x1 plus x2 plus x3, as they are equal to w1, w2, and w3. Next, to find, we need to find the kernel and range of TA. The first thing, in order to find kernel TA, we need to let TA x1, x2, x3 is equal to zero vector. Here, the zero vector is zero, zero, zero. As we can, as we get the TA in the previous step, we know that TA x1, x2, x3 is x1 plus x2 plus x3, x1 plus x2 plus x3, x1 plus x2 plus x3 is equal to 0, 0, 0. So we transform this matrix form into linear equation form. We will get x1 plus x2 plus x3 is equal to 0. So from here, we change it so that we can get x1 is equal to negative x2 minus x3. Thus, the kernel of TA is equal to x1, x2, x3, where x1 is equal to negative x2 minus x3. Then, we can substitute x1 into this equation. So, we will get kernel of TA is equal to negative x2 minus x3, x2, x3. Next, to find the range, we will <coughs> we must assume that uh, there is a vector which is A, B, and C is an element of range TA. We also assume that for every vector X, which is X1, X2, X3, is an element of R3, there exists TA, X1, X2, X3, which is equal to A, B, C. So, from here, TA, X1, X2, X3, as, we state, as I stated before, is x1 plus x2 plus x3, x1 plus x2 plus x3, x1 plus x2 plus x3 is equal to a, b, c. We change this form into linear equation form. We will notice that x1 plus x2 plus x3 is equal to a, is equal, is equal to b, and is equal to c. So we can get, we will write a is equal to b is equal to c. So the range of t a is a, B, C, where A is equal to B equals C, then we will substitute it into A, 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 where A is an element of R, then A is, we can transform it into A, 1, 1, 1, where A is an element of a real number. Alright, that's all from me. Hi, so moving on to question 6. We have to find the linear transformation TP, the kernel, and the range of the linear transformation. So from the question 2, we already got our matrix of P. So how to change the matrix into linear transformation? We simply multiply the matrix of P, uh, multiply by the ma vector matrix X1, X2, X3. So here, we will finally get the linear transformation of TP, which is 
negative x1 minus x2 plus x3, x1 plus x3 and x2 plus x3 in a matrix. So next we will find the kernel. So first let's recall what is the kernel. Simply uh, in, a word, in words we can say that kernel is the set of vectors in V that maps into zero vector of W through linear transformation T a linear transformation so in this case it is tp so since tp maps to r3 uh, so the zero vector of w now it is the zero vector of r3 so uh, to find the kernel you simply write that uh, the transformation of tp of x1 x2 x3 is equals to 0 0 0 which is the zero vector of r3 so here we can write it again in a system of linear equations so we can change this SLE to an augmented matrix. So from here, we can uh, get the RREF by using applying elemental row operations. So at last here, we will get the RREF with uh, leading ones in each row. So we can simply put that uh, the solutions are x1 equals to 0, x2 equals to 0, x3 equals to 0. So here is how we write the kernel. So the kernel of TP is equals to 0, 0, 0, which is equals to 0 vector of R3. So uh, the kernel is 0 vector of R3 that maps into 0 vector of R3 as well in W. So we can say here that the, that the TP is a one-to-one -one linear transformation. Okay, so easy, right? So next, let's find the range. So the range is the set of all vectors in W that are images under T of at least one vector in V. Also under transformation of T. Here it is TP. So the find, to find the range, it is somehow similar to finding the kernel. But instead of uh, writing it as equals to 0, 0, 0, here we write it as ABC. As we assume that there exists vector ABC that is mapped from x1, x2, x3 under TP. So here, we also can write the SLE and then the matrix. And finally, we reduce the augmented matrix into an RREF. So we can simply write that x1 equals to this, x2 equals to this, x3 equals to this, x1 to b minus a minus c per 3, x2 to c minus a minus b per 3, x3 a plus b plus c per 3. So this is the final answer for writing a range. So here, uh, the range of linear transformation TP is equals to ABC. As in, the linear transformation uh, transformed to B minus A minus C per 3 to C minus A minus B per 3, A plus B plus C per 3 into map into ABC. So that is all for question 6. Thank you. Question 7. Assume that A is the standard matrix of TA such that TA, P2 maps into P2. Obtain TA, kernel TA and range TA. To find the TA, we use A as a standard matrix. Since transformation of A is P2 maps into P2, so we denote as A0, A1, A2 to the basis of 1, x and x square so we write ta in a bracket a not a1 a2 with the basis 1 x and x square equal to matrix of a times a not a1 and a2 to the basis of 1 x and x square so we use multiplication of matrices and we get a not plus a1 plus a2 a not plus a1 plus a2 a0 plus A1 plus A2 to the basis of 1, X and, and X square. This TA is in matrix form. We also can write it as follows, which is in polynomial form. We write TA A0 plus A1 times X plus A2 times X square equal to A0 plus A1 plus A2 plus in bracket a0 plus A1 plus A2 times X plus in bracket A0 plus A1 plus A2 times X square. To find the kernel T, 
we recap the meaning of kernel which is if t v maps to w is a linear transformation then the set of vector in v that t maps into zero vector of w so in this case t a is p2 maps into p2 so the zero vector of p2 is 0 times 1 plus 0 times x plus 0 times x square. So we write kernel T A as A0 plus A1 x plus A2 x square in a P2 such that transformation of A equal to 0 vector in P2. So we equate using the transformation we get in the previous slide. So we get a0 plus a1 plus a2 plus in bracket a0 plus a1 plus a2 times x plus in bracket a0 plus a1 plus a2 times x square equal to 0 vector of p2. So we transfer it into SLE and solve the augmented matrix using RREF. And we get a0 as a leading variable and a1 and a2 is free variable so we let a1 equal to s and a2 equal to t so from the matrix we get after using rref we get a0 plus a1 plus a2 equal to 0 so we substitute a1 equal to s and a2 equal to t and we get a0 equal to negative in bracket s plus t therefore kernel of T A equal to negative in bracket S plus T plus S X plus T X square. To find the range of T A, we recap the meaning of range first. The set of all vectors in W that are imaged under T of at least one vector in V is range. So since transformation of A is P2 in maps into P2, we write the range of T A equals to D0 plus B1 X plus B2 X square in P2 such that transformation of A equal to B0 plus B1 X plus B2 X square. So we let our range of T A equal to B0 plus B1 X plus B2 X square. Then we equate using the transformation. So T A a0 plus a1x plus a2x square equal to b0 plus b1x plus b2x square. So we get a0 plus a1 plus a2 plus in bracket a0 plus a1 plus a2 times x plus in bracket a0 plus a1 plus a2 times x square equal to b0 plus b1x plus b2x square. So we equate then and transfer it into SLE and solve the augmented matrix using RREF. After using RREF to solve the matrix, and we get A0 plus A1 plus A2 equal to B0. Equal to B1 equal to B2. 0 equal to B1 minus B0. So, B1 equal to B0. 0 equal to B2 minus B0. So, B2 equal to B0. Thus, Range of T A equals to B0 plus B1X plus B2X square in P2 such that P B0 equal to B1 equal to B2. We also can simplify it into B0 in bracket 1 plus X plus X square in P2. Finally, we have come to the end of our discussion. That's all from us, group 1. Thank you.